Praise God, everyone. I pray that you are all doing well. The word of the Lord on today is coming from the book of Psalm 119, verses 112. Um, and that says to incline your hearts to perform his statues, meaning the statues of the Lord, right? And so the Lord wanted me to come on here and share. And this is going to be... Um, this is going to be a little bit of correction, but as always, correction given with love, and I'm going to give some encouragement at the end. So when you look up the definition of the word incline, it means to feel willing or favorably disposed towards an action, belief, or attitude. Amen. And so when the Lord says that we should incline our hearts to perform his statues, he wants us to be willing to do the things that he asks us to do. He wants us to move in faith and not grumble against the things that he asks us to do. He understands that they're hard for your flesh. He understands that you may not fully understand what it is he's calling you to do. But nevertheless, right, he is the Lord our God. And when he speaks a command, we must obey it. All right. There's, um, yeah, when he speaks a word, it must be obeyed. And that's for several reasons, but the, the, the number one reason is it's what keeps our soul safe. It's what delivers our soul. Amen. You have to be obedient. If you're not obedient, you're going to find yourself in territories and in positions that you were not supposed to be in. You're going to find yourself having to depend on the grace of the Lord to constantly rescue you out of a fickle. Amen. And so... As you wait on the things that the Lord has promised you, as you draw closer to him, as you get to know him as a father, as a friend, as a comforter, make sure that you incline your heart to perform the things that he's told you to do. Meaning do them willingly, do them with joy. Amen. Do not grumble. Do not grumble. And when the Lord asks us to do things, they could be very, very small things or they could be grand things, right? Right. But understand that to him, they're all big things because we're all connected while we're in the earth. So you picking up the phone and sending that text message to someone may seem like a really small thing. And you might be putting that off, putting that off, putting that off. But you're carrying the very encouragement or the word that the person desperately needs to hear. You are carrying a message to them from the Lord without even realizing it sometimes that, hey, somebody loves me and somebody cares. I can't tell you how many times that I've been in that position where the Lord just asked me to do something simple, whether it's to go to a place or make a phone call or not go somewhere. Right. There's so many times you all know um, for the most part, you all know that I have one-on-one -on -one meetings. There's times where the person that I am supposed to meet with no-shows me, just does not show up. And I'll get a frantic text message, ooh, excuse me, text message or phone call from another person in their moment of despair, in their moment of needing to hear from the Lord, in, in their time of need, they need to be comforted and they fill in that spot. The Lord orchestrates things so beautifully in our lives, and we're not always going to understand it. And to be honest, we're not always going to agree with it. Sometimes we feel as though, you know, he needs to come in right now and vindicate us. This person wronged us, and it looks like they've gone off with their life, and they're happy, and we're sitting here waiting. We're sitting here praying. We're sitting here fasting. So it's really easy to get ourselves out of that posture where we're willingly doing the things that the Lord calls us to do. And the more you obey the instructions that the Lord sets before you, the more instruction will come. The clearer the instruction will um, will get. We've all been there. You're in a you're in a pinch or you're in a situation. Right? You need to call someone. I'm sure we've all filled out some sort of application or been a part of something where we have to have an emergency con contact. For your emergency contact, you don't pick the friend or the family member that you see once a year at the reunion. That's not going to be your emergency contact. You're that person that you go to when you need to get something done, when you need someone to be there for you, when you need something performed, it's going to be that person that you talk to all the time. It's going to be that person that you see all the time. It's going to be that person that you know when it comes down to the wire that you're going to be able to get in touch with them easily, right? And they're going to do what you ask them to do. 
And that's very much the way that God is. When you're in his presence, it positions you to be able to get that instruction that you need. But when you get the instruction, you have to move forward with it. You have to move forward with it. Amen. There's an importance, especially in this season of following the instructions that you were given. The Holy Spirit is just pressing on this point. Follow the instructions that you've been given. And if you have a question about what those instructions are, that's okay. Take it back to the Lord. I don't have, um, I don't have it pulled up here right in front of me right now. But I'm going to take you guys back to when Jesus was trying to explain to the disciples that he was going to be crucified. They didn't get it. And the, the word of the Lord says that, that Jesus perceived that they were talking amongst themselves, trying to figure out what he was talking about. He knew that they did not understand. And he said, are you trying to make sense of what I just said? And they're like, yeah, we are. We have no idea what you're talking about. We're all confused. And then Jesus broke it down for them. Same concept still applies, guys. If you're unsure about an instruction that the Lord has given you, or if you're unsure about something that you are supposed to do, when you earnestly petition the Lord, he will answer you. I'm not talking about promises. I'm not talking about asking the Lord, who's my husband? Who's my wife? You know, how many kids I'm going to have? What type of house I'm going to live in? What's this job? This and that. I'm not, I'm not talking about promises. I'm talking about instructions where you are the servant going to your master, trying to get instructions on how to fulfill his plan for your life and for the life of people around you. Amen. That is what I'm talking about. He will immediately give you the instruction because it's his will for you to know and understand it. And if you don't understand it fully and you say, Lord, I can't move from this place until I 100% know that this is you and that this is the instruction, he will confirm it and he will continuously speak it again. That's the most beautiful thing about our Lord. I shouldn't say the most beautiful thing. There's a million things that's beautiful about him, right? But 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 one of the things that I can really appreciate about the Lord our God is he's not ashamed or or timid to repeat himself. Can I say <laughs> he's not ashamed to repeat himself? No, he's not. He's not a God that is above repeating himself over and over and over and over again. And so you are no exemption. He loves you so much. He will sit and repeat himself a million times until you get it and until you move and until you act. Amen. So do everybody around you a favor, right? Because our journeys are all so connected. So do everybody the favor and be obedient. Because your lack of obedience could be affecting the people around you. Amen. And so I pray that this blesses you. If you have questions about anything that I said, feel free to email me. My email address is listed in the description box. And I love you all with the love of Christ. Until next time.